Oh, Mr. Holman, that's such a great song. Beatles are one of my favorite um, older groups. So, once you uh, start off. Beatles are. No, what's that? I'm surprised you even know who the Beatles are as young as you are. Oh, Little man. Child. So, once you start off and explain to us why uh, that song is such a good um, introduction to this lesson today. Well, the whole Renaissance is a revolution. It's a revolution. Um, that takes place and it's about the, the changing of the world. And in that song, he says, everybody wants to change the world. And this is a time of total drastic change that fundamentally makes the world we live in today. And so first, I guess we should talk a little bit about what we mean by it's a revolution. So the first thing we need to understand, this isn't a revolution about guns and armies and, and navies, like you might see if we thought about the Revolutionary War. So that was a nice little add on that picture. So we're not talking about that kind of a revolution. We're talking about a revolution inside the human mind. And so we're talking really, so as I draw my little X on this, right, we're really talking about this side over here, how people think about the world and how they look at the world. So we're not talking about guns. So it's that kind of revolution. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, the Renaissance, a uh, couple of things. The, you know, big keyword with the Renaissance, like you said, would be revolution. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Right. We'll add this though. The revel or, you know, the Renaissance means is French for, um, the rebirth. So it's, you know, the rebirth of society and you've got the years there, 1350 to 1700. So we're going to take a look at the background, what really led to this and make sure kids understand those fundamental ideas. Okay. And in order to, to talk about what led to this, I think, you know, like you said, we have to go back to what is being, um, what idea and notion is being reborn. So, you know, we have the classical age where the Europeans could worry less about dying and staying alive and actually concentrate on, on what we'll call living and having um, the positive life experience and having fun. So, you know, things like the glory of Rome, um, the Colosseum that can come in here, the amphitheater, Roman law, all these wonderful things um, that that existed during the time of Rome. Though I guess I completely skipped over Greece before that, but same concept with, with Greece and Rome. Well, it's, it's really important too for the kids to recognize that anytime they typically see the word the classic age, that is looking back at Greece and Rome. And I'm drawn on my iPad and it looks a little different on the screen. That was circling classic age, but it's a little moved. Um, but that idea of the classic age is always looking back to Greece and Rome, uh, the greatness of Greece and Rome. So the reference of the classic age always means Greece and Rome. So, yep, things were really good for Greece and Rome. And then some bad things seem to happen. And I guess we'll move on. And go ahead. We'll let you take the start on this one here. Well, the Middle Ages, um, I think the first thing we, we want to check off is this: the Dark Ages down here. We need to think about that for a minute and what that implies. So the Dark Ages was a, a time period where there was very, very little formal education. There wasn't a lot of new invention and new creation. The world didn't seem to progress like it had in the classical period. So you saw a time period um, where people basically lived in this feudal society. And in that feudal society, they lived virtually on the manor they were born in. They spent their entire life within 20 to 25 miles of the place they were born and never saw anything about the world. And that creates a system where people aren't learning. They aren't um, focused outward. They're focused inward. And there was so much fear and lack of um, well, chaos is what we talked about in class. There's a lot of chaos in Europe. So people were just worried about making it to live through to the next day. Um, it wasn't about enjoying life or or trying to get educated or to move up in the social structure. You were born and you were pretty much stuck where you were. So I think we need to just make sure everybody understands that that dark ages means a lot more than or implies all of these interesting ideas. But the Crusades, on the other hand, they made a different kind of check. When the Europeans traveled down to the Holy Land and began to interact with the Asian world and the Islamic world, and what we would call the Holy Land today, 
Um, they brought back tons of ideas to Europe. Um, they brought back silk. They brought back spices. They brought back apricots. They just brought back a wealth of knowledge that started to make Europeans look at the world differently. Instead of looking internally on their manner, they began to look outward. And then, of course, came the famous Black Death. If you want to take a swing at that one real quick, I'll get rid of some of this for you. Yeah, so um, Black Death started in Asia and was spread pretty um, pretty quickly through trade routes and um, definitely with the aid of the with the Mon with the Mongols and then you know making that whole um, trip from Asia to Europe a little safer, well safer once again, um, you know with the Silk Road that really helps spread the the Black Death and they used to credit it to these little guys here. Um, though recently there has been some new articles saying that it wasn't actually spread by rats, but they were thinking that it might have actually been spread by gerbils, um, which I think is interesting that, you know, hundreds of hundreds of years later, we're still not entirely sure um, what caused that spread. But that might have been a discussion for another day, right? Yeah, I mean, well, and that's ironic. That's important to think about history, that we think we know things. And as time passes, we learn new things that kind of question what we know. But as the story stands now, the Black Death kind of starts in China and spreads its way through Europe. And those years were um, 1347 through 51. So in that time period, you notice this date, this 51, if we start the Renaissance at around 1350, we're right there. This is when things change. And so the Black Death killed off so many Europeans. That the feudal system that you pulled up so nicely before, which maybe you'll pull that hierarchy up again. Sure. The hierarchy kind of collapses. You know, there's nothing really there for that uh, system to maintain. The, the peasants can move to the cities. They can get jobs. You know, many of the knights no longer um, can, are working for the nobles. So the whole system kind of collapses. So we're seeing drastic change just from the Black Death. It kind of creates the atmosphere for everything to change. And so I guess we'll move on to the next slide. Anything 